right? So let's take a look of this project. Um, so here is the uh, index.html, which contains uh, the, the view, uh, the, the stati static view of this page. So it has a head tag and a body tag. And in the head, it just links with the CSS, uh, return CSS. And in the, just, uh, in the body tag, it has a form, which is just this input field. Right? A form, it has an input inside it. And also, it has a list, UL list. And it has it's empty, so that means the item are dynamically ending by the JavaScript, right? It's, it's in, there's nothing inside this list, and it has ID, has a class, and that's a list for the all nodes here, right? That is empty, and uh, the other two are just script tag. Uh, the first script tag is using some libraries online. It's just like the the way we link the Bootstrap CSS online. It's using some online JavaScript code here. We're gonna talk about them more in the future. And this one is uh, the, its own CSS file. Right? Oh, sorry, its own JavaScript file. Uh, the return the the JS, JS in the JS folder. It is here. Right. So in the CSS file, it's just some style like uh, uh, change the box size into border box or uh, something like change the margin, thing like that. Right, we're not gonna talk about that too much. And the main focus for us is going to be in the JavaScript file, right? So that's going to be uh, what we focus. So let's firstly take a look of the module they have here. So in the module, um, they have the, they create a variable for it, and inside it, it's it's actually uh, it's an object contains three different methods, right? Method is just functions inside the project. Oh, sorry, inside the object. Uh, the first one is initial. What it does is just uh, I think it's initial the let's add some comments. Initial the local storage. Uh, it's going it's it's checking if the local storage doesn't have notes. If that is true, we we'll see the local storage uh, lo 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 storage the notes is equal to the empty array. Right, uh, it's initialize the local storage, make it an empty array. And we have add function. I think this one is add new node into local storage. So it's gonna uh, say variable data is equal to the current nodes and push the, this object into the, the, the this data and then reset it to local storage. So just what same thing what we did in the bookmarks, if you remember that. That's the exact same thing with what we did in the bookmarks, but they put them uh, inside the, this object. Oh, sorry, inside the this model object. And the next one is called get all notes. I think this one is get all notes from local storage. So it's just getting all the notes from local storage. All right, local storage the notes and uh, just gonna parse it. All right, so. So you see, all three methods has nothing to do like how we're going to show them on the screen, or how we're going to like process, uh, how we're going to uh, display the data or remove the data on the screen. It's all talk about uh, talk with, uh, not communicate with uh, local storage. The data type we have there, the data we, we store all the data in the local storage. So all those methods they put here, uh, working with those data, right? So it's nothing to do with how we're going to show those those data on the screen or how we are going to know the order, how we change the order like it's showing on the screen, there's nothing to do with the view. Right, those are, this is why we put them in the module, in the model, right, in the model uh, a variable. And let's keep going. We have the Octopus variable. So in this one, we also have a few uh, methods. The first one, and new node. So this one, what it starts is going to uh, call function called the model dot and uh, I think it's going to call this add function in the model. See, it's gonna call two functions. It's gonna call the add function in the model object and the call the render function in the view object. So it's kind of like communicate both with the model and the view. What it does is going to firstly call the add function to adding a new node into the local storage. So it will, it won't uh, uh, directly add in a node into local storage. Instead, it will call the function in the model and ask the model to do the modification. So the model is the, has the function add 
to adding a new node into local storage. And afterwards, only call the function to ask the node to do whatever you want. Right? I'm just going I, I don't care like where you're going to add the node. I just tell you, please add a node. I'm not, uh, at Octoverse, I don't care if you store the node in the local storage, in the database, in your, uh, even like in your computer, uh, Excel sheet, or something like that. I don't care about it. Only thing I care is I ask you to add a node. And the, the, the node will, will add it. Depends on the logic we're having here. So in the future, if we want to change where to add the node, you just need to change this function. You do not have to touch this function. Right, the add node, add new node function is only gonna give the instruction, I mean, not give the instruction, give the command, ask the m model to add the nodes. And the model function, this add function, is actually a function which decides how we can add it. I hope that makes sense. So this one going to uh, ask model to add a new node. Right, it's going to also provide the, the, the new node as an argument to the model. And also it's going to call a view the render. This one, we haven't taken a look at that, but this one is going to uh, show, uh, like it's going to re-render re -render the uh, list in view page. Right? It's going to re-render re this list. It's going to, going to clear it up and re-show re uh, re everything, right? Like show the current uh, node, notes, all the notes we have here. right? And get notes. Again, this one is also going to call the model to get me all the notes. It doesn't really care about where the no model is going to grab the notes for me. I just ask the model, and the model is going to care about, like, is that I'm going to grab it from local storage, from somewhere in the computer, or online. It doesn't really care about it. Just ask model to do it for it. Ask model to provide all notes. It's going to call the model that get all notes. And the get more notes is going to call the local storage. Right, we're separating the concerns. Octopus doesn't care about anything about how you store the data. It's just going to communicate with you. And the model is going to take about that. Take care about like how we really do it. I also have initial here. Initial just uh, initialize the page. So initialize the page, including the two parts of initial. You can initial the, the local storage inside the, uh, the notes inside local storage. And also going to initialize, uh, initialize the how the page looks like. So this is uh, this initializes uh, the both the model and the view. It's just give command, and the view and the model going to uh, you know to to follow those command, right? To do do whatever they need. So right. So if you want to change how it is getting initialized, we're going to change it here. This is uh, in the view have initial method. Right. So it has initial method. Um, so in initialize the uh, page view. Right, let's look at it line by line. So the first line, um, this the note list is equal to dollar sign ID notes. So this dollar sign, it just means document the query selector. This is uh, using some library to do it. It's library called jQuery. We didn't teach that because that's a little bit out of date. Uh, you do not have to like previously. You have to learn jQuery to working at, to, work, to work as a developer. Right now, it's not required anymore. We are trying to get rid of it. So I'm not teaching this one in this. Uh, only we only have five months. So I want to teach something more important. Right. So just to let you know, this is equivalent as document the query selector. Since I already have a document the query selector, so we do not even need to have the dollar sign anymore. Whenever you say that, you can treat that as document the query selector. Right. I will select the the field with ID notes, which is this UL. It has ID notes. I right, will select this one. Next thing is we will select the ID new note form. I think that is this form here. New note form. See the ID is here. Select this form. And the next one, new note content. It selects the ID new node content. I think it is this input here has ID new code content. All right, just try trying to select all those items and we're gonna do something afterwards. And new not form the submit. That means when I submit this form, it's just basically just add, added a event listener here. All right, it's using some other uh, syntax, but it's adding a event listener. It's like when I submit this form, I'm going to run this function. What this function does? It's going to 
call the function in the octopus because whenever we're ending with, like whenever we submit this form right whenever I submit the form that means I want to end in a new node right but the view cannot directly touch the model it cannot ask you tell the model please end it for me it's going to tell the octopus I want to communicate with the no, uh, module model can you help me so this is why it's called a function add a new node from the octopus and then pass in the value of the content of it and the octopus going to call the function add new node and ask the model to do it for us so the view and the model they never communicate the view gonna talk with model uh, sorry, talk, talk with octopus ask, ask octopus to to tell the model we want to edit it's same like uh, one extra slip here but they're actually going to clear up your code like uh, if you want to change something you know like we'll change it right just trying to separation the concern this is very important right now in the in the modern development we're always trying to separate our concern yeah. the view should only cares about the view part model only cares about the model part and uh, it's going to be easier for you to maintain in the future to looking for okay so i want to change the i don't want to use local storage anymore i may want to use something like uh, i want to store things in the excel ca uh, excel for file and the only, only thing is you, you do not have to touch the view, do not have to touch the octopus, you just need to touch the, uh, the, the, the model here. And if I want to say, okay, I do not want to display my list as a list. I do not want to uh, display those things as a list. I want to make them as like a button. And then you just need to touch the view part. You do not have to touch the model or the octopus. And when do you need to touch the octopus? It's barely not. You never, you don't have to touch the octopus. It's just the the main idea we have octopus is just try to separate the view and the uh, and the uh, model. But sometimes maybe you want to change your code structure, uh, how change how they're gonna connect it together. You may t also touch the octopus. We're gonna see the uh, how the examples in the future when we I think when we're working with a cat clicker or something else. We're gonna maybe touch the octopus. Um, all right, let's keep looking at the view. So, uh, new kind of formula submit to run this function and either prevent the default, we're talking about it, just prevent the page to be refreshed. All right, we'll talk about that. And they're also going to call the function view.render, it's going to re render the page. So, let's take a look about the render function. Render function um, it's going to set up the HTML string equal to empty. That means it's going to reset the content equal to empty. We did it yesterday, right? For the cat clicker. Like every time I click something, I can first see that's empty and display the new one. It's just like the, uh, uh, in, in all the projects we did that. Like for the uh, unit converter, every time I change the unit, I want to clear it up. Every time I run the number, I want to clear it up. And for the bookmarks, every time I add a new bookmark, I can clear it up. And now, we are trying to call octopus.get notes. We are trying to get in the current nodes we have. So we, after adding a new one or after we refresh the page, I want to get in the current nodes I have inside it. So Octopus will get in the, the nodes for me. And it will be an, uh, the nodes uh, with the order we, we, put, we put them in, right? It's going to be the, the order we put them in. So it's just getting all of them back. Like remember, every time we're adding a new nodes, we use a push. Push going to end in the, it's at the end of the array, right? It's going to end at the end of the array. And this one just using the for each to display them one by one. So this is why every time we're adding a new one, it's ending to the end of the file. Uh, the file, Because we we'll use the push. The push is going to push that to the end of, the, of it. All right? Um, so yeah, this is how this whole project is does. And nothing else, just uh, this. And right now, the first thing they want me to add, they want me to change, is change the order we're displaying this, this stuff. We want to display them, them reversely. So if we want to change how we... Actually, this change can be, can be made in ever, any place. Like if I change it into the model, I can do that. Instead of push, I may, I may using some other methods, adding that object at the beginning of the array. That's going to work. But that's not the best choice. Because we only care about how it is displayed. We do not care about how how it's stored in there. So we can just touch the how it is displayed. It's maybe easier, and maybe also it's going to influence the, the the least stuff, right? Because maybe the order we stored in uh, we stored in log storage means something else for the other developer in your team. They maybe also 
relies on how those data are stored in the uh, in log storage. So we better do not touch the data structure in the storage. We just change the way we dis display it. So we're gonna actually change it in the view or in the octaverse. I prefer to change that in the view, but uh, you also can change it in the octaverse. Like uh, this get notes. It's gonna get all the notes from the model. If I call reverse here, it's just gonna be reverse it for me before I give it to the view. Right, so the notes gonna give me the uh, array of those, those model, or uh, array of those notes. If I call reverse here, it's gonna give me all notes and then reverse it. And the view doesn't care about like how you, how you provide me the notes. I just display what you give me. If you give me reversely, I just display it reversely. And by doing that, the notes will be reversely. Oh, uh, actually, I just broke it. Uh, what is what is wrong right now? Let's see. Model that get all notes reverse is not a function. Uh, I cannot no, call it. Okay, that makes sense. Reverse, right? So if I need new one, I should be the first one. Here we go. See, it's ending as first right now. And uh, if I do not want to change it here, I can also choose to change that in the in the render function here. Here it has a for each. For each basically just does it just get, loop from the first one until the last one. I can change this for each loop into a for loop, and it will loop from the last one to the first one. Then it will be reversely. But then maybe that can be uh, more works. So maybe this in this case we we'll just annual reverse the easiest way. And another way I can also write a code here. For example, I do not call the for each here. I'm gonna call something like a, a for loop, um, like a for. Um, let's uh, um, let's say let's, let's let's get a length of it. So I'm gonna get in uh, variable length. You see, like they are still using variable. We actually should use a constant for that, or using using uh, let for that. It's this, this code they have here is a little bit out of date. Uh, length is equal to octopus. Let me copy that. Octopus, the get notes, uh, the lens, the lens of the array will get it. Show you, I'm sorry, Sway. Yes? Even though they're using bar, mm -hmm. you're writing new code there. Can't you, stop, can't you start using let and constraint? Okay, so that's a good question. So, when you, like, a, let's, let's assume I'm a new developer, they're hiring for their company. And they when say, you, go in and fix this. Yeah, let me, let, let me, see, let me finish. So uh, I'm a new developer. I'm, I'm just getting into this company. So the thing you want to do is, if they're using like an error function, you will need to use an error function. If they're using variable, you will need to use variable. Why? Because the code you write, you also need to make sure they understand it. Like you're going to keep them consistent. This is very important when you get to a new company. And you're gonna, maybe they have their own reason to use it. Maybe they, are, they, they want to kind of think about like some old browsers like IE5, IE4, like 10 years or 20 years ago. Yeah. Those, com those browsers maybe, they, they have like a bunch of user, uh, clients who is, are still using those old browsers. They know it, but you do not. So they, you better follow in their consistency. They may do not give you the role, but you still want to say, like, okay, how they do it, and I'm going to do this similarly. Mm -hmm. They're actually going to mention about this in the uh, later courses, like lesson three or lesson two, four, they're going to mention it. That That's a good sense. question. Yeah, they're gonna mention about it. Do do? Yeah, do what they do so they do not make a mistake. Maybe in some future when you have chances, you can ask one of them, like, why do we using variable here? Can we just use let, make it, like, uh, tell them the advantage of using let, and they may consider it. And they may say, oh, this guy is really smart, thing like that. But you do not just do it by yourself. Ask before you do it. Mm -hmm. All right? So I have a lens, and I can, I can comment this out, because I'm right now I actually want to rewrite it. So I'm going to do a, a for loop here. Uh, for variable i equals to the length. Remember, we are going to reversely, right? And when i is uh, bigger than zero, we want to actually bigger or equal to zero. I want to continue, right? Uh, I think it start from length minus one, right? The length minus one is the last item. Remember, if I have five items, the last item the index is four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. And every time i minus minus, so we're going to do it reversely. And what I want to do every time is just the same thing, this one here. Uh, we're going to change it a little bit. So it's not going to be no to the content. It's going to be 
uh, octopus get noti get notes uh, the ice item the content so this again also will be reversely I think it's gonna be reversely back because I reversed it here and I reverse it again so it will be on at the end again but if I, I change this back to not reversely it's just going to reverse with this for loop all right it's gonna be reversed with for loop right now if I any it's gonna be the first one okay so that's two ways you can reverse it either reverse it in the module oh sorry in the octopus or in the view both of them are a correct answer both of them are correct answer right so that's the uh, first question the second one the real, the one I actually want to talk more about is the second one it will want any a date after like after each notes that's the first time we're working with date so it's going to take some extra works here all right so let's uh let me change it make it easier i do not want to make it like this one maybe is of course this one looks cleaner in this case and let's just use i do not i actually want to add a reverse here so keep it easier to read reverse all right so i want any a uh, date for each one of them so that means to any on date and you firstly store the date right like a like a, when i enter something i need to I need to I need to let the let the uh, JavaScript know what is state for it, and they're gonna keep it forever, st staying here forever, right? So what we're gonna do here is um, uh, we're gonna first cl clear up this local storage because later it's gonna break it up because right now it doesn't have a date, and I'm adding a date. So the new one we're trying to get a date, the old one going also trying to get a date. It's gonna get an error. So we're going to remove the local storage. I think I can remove it from here. We still have bookmarks here, notes in here. I'm going to delete it. Right. Bookmarks, uh, you can keep it or delete it, doesn't matter. That's just bookmarks. So, you can see the local storage is going to stay there forever until you delete it by yourself. All right. So, right now, if I refresh a page, nothing is going to happen because I cleared it up. And let's start working on, on it. And that's it. We're going to store the, uh, the, the both dates and notes. Right? So let's see. Um, let's see how we're gonna do it. Mm. I do not need to touch the initial lines uh, because it's just going to show the sh uh, show the uh, getting the contact of the uh, content and the form, and I do not touch the form because I do not have to enter the date. The data is just getting from the current date. Um, let's say render. Uh, I don't need to do that. Octopus add a new note. Okay, I may need to touch this part here. It, when it's adding new note, it's adding the the value of current notes. I think I may also want to add in the the current date. So I'm adding, actually adding instead of adding just a value, I'm actually I'm adding an object, including the note and the date. Hmm. Right, so I'm passing in the value. I also want to pass in the second parameter here, like it's uh, date done now. I think. Let me, let me make sure about this. So if I enter date done now here, uh, not this one. I think it's capitalized date done now. Yeah. So that is a string referring to the current uh, number referring to the current ta current time. Uh, I think I can show that into a string, but I forget how to do it. I'm gonna search it online later. So right now I just pass it in date done now to the octopus and octopus go into call the function add new note add new note right it's going to take the note string and also the the current uh time right current time or we can call it, call it date time i think it's including both date and time so we'll call it date time and uh, huh uh, i think the time is uh is actually a, a, a word if i don't remember it wrong because they actually have a something called data time. Or uh, maybe, yeah, it's just a, just a real word. It just means data and time <laughs> in English. <laughs> right. So, so what it does, it's going to, uh, right now it's all going to add more things. It's going to call the model, the and, 
Uh, let's say what does model dot add do? It's going to add that up into the into the data. So we're going to add it here. So we this is the object we're going to add. This object has a has a note has a note has a note string. Also, I want to add it have a date time. So it's going to be date time. It's going to be date time we want it here. Date time. So this is a name, and this is a value. The value is this one. We can call it, give it another name if you like. Like for example, I can call it uh, uh, time stamp, something like that. If you want to call it something differently, but just to let you know, like this two can be different. This two can be different. Mm -hmm. So we're ending the date, and uh, also I'd like to check here. Looks like I don't think I need to change it here. This one just directly adding whatever I provided to it to the local storage. I don't have to take care about that. And um, I think right now if I try to add, it's going to add that one into local storage. Let's try it. So if I add the uh, hello, right? So it's not showing that because we haven't uh, added the code to, to showing that. But in the local storage, I should be able to see the current date for that. See? It has a content and have a timestamp. If any, a new one will come. Let's say it has two items here, right? Hello and will come. They have a different time step. And uh, the, see the second one is have a larger have a larger number means that's come after it. So all right, um, let's display them on the screen. Let's dis display them on the screen. So get all notes. We don't have touch that. It's just getting all notes. Uh, get notes function. I don't think I need to touch that. It's just get all the notes to the to the view, and the view is a place like we're going to decide how we're going to show that. Uh, this one has octopus that get notes. For each, it's what it does. Just getting just create a list item for it and notes the content. Um, this is a like really the old way we, we do the string, right? We can use the backticks right now. So, but it's okay. We just keep it. So I also want to add in note the uh, time step, right? Time step, and in that after it, so it's gonna be like that. And I may want to re uh, change the style of it. For example, I can say adding a uh, uh, a tag for it. What tag should to be is small tag. Yeah, I just was thinking it. small tag. So I'm gonna have a string. So if you're using single quotes, I'm just using single quotes. Add a small tag. Just gonna make the text smaller, and 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 close it. Uh, uh, gonna cut the code. mark small, and and the rest of it. So it's gonna be nothing changed. But I think they styled it. I think they styled it in the CSS. I think they styled it in here. We're gonna style it as well. So let's just add it to here. I'm gonna add it here, right? So for all the small tag, small, I want to change the uh, the font size. Make it uh, smaller, like a point eight gram. Yeah, it's getting smaller. And I can also drag it to the right. Like I do a float, right? So it's gonna be the right. And then maybe I can change the color of it into uh, some some gray color. I mean, using some like a uh, like that, or I can that's purple. That's not not. not. I'm gonna drag it some else, like uh, maybe some gray color. Oops. By gray, I mean real gray color. I'm just gonna drag it to here. Oh no, it's invisible. I'm gonna make it uh, darker, like that. No, <laughs> still invisible. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna keep it uh, like red color. Red definitely gonna be visible. I'm gonna make it red. All right, make it red. What? Oh, I think because I'm using this opacity is not high enough. Here we go. All right. That's a time step. Well it looks ugly, but just just make it visible. Okay, okay, okay. You can start it as as you want. And this is not a real time. 
So that means I need to transfer that into real time. Like it's just some number, like uh, who knows what this number stands for. Right, we're gonna transfer that into real time. So let's say, Google it. I already actually just forget it. So uh, transfer date the now into uh, date and time, JavaScript. Like, and I have a lot of, like, how to convert the result from the now to year, month, date, something like that. So, I'm gonna have a lot of ways to do it. Uh, seems like we can call a date outside of it. And let's try it. So, if I any a date outside of it, let's see what's gonna happen. Here we go. I got a Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019, 11, uh, 11, 18, 10, and also tell me what my time zone is. All right? So if I any, uh, any new one right now, it says uh, M symbol. See, this is 11, 18, 27. Same time? Same time? What? Yeah, see, so it's it's same time. Hmm, that's not what we exa expect. Well, it's given the current time. Yeah. yeah. They all the, because all change. Because what we started here is that the now it is change is something gonna keep changing, keep changing, keep changing. That's not what we want. No. No, we wanted to keep the the, the old time it has there. Um. Maybe I want to change that. Put a. Uh, I may create a, make that as a variable. Uh, time is equal to data now, and we're gonna call some function to fix to fix it, like to string, change that to a string type. I'm not sure if that's gonna help, but we can try it. And we're gonna pass in time inside it. It's still changing. Every time I fresh, it's still changing. Huh? How do I make it not change anymore? How about I directly store the the date of date to now? And in here, I just display the notes that stamps. I do it over there. Hmm, date data now. And I want to display it here. I, I, let's try to also call it date here. Seems like a, a the working. It's working. Or not. All right. So I think I have to I have create a new new date, and with the current date, it's still not working. Huh, that is tricky. Um, how can I? Is there a method for like the timestamp instead of? Maybe. Let's Google it. JavaScript get current. Time step. Uh, let's see how to get the current time step in JavaScript. Maybe you can try date the get time. Maybe that worked. Let's try it. So what we're gonna do is new date. Uh, new date the get time, and see what's gonna happening. It's still changing. <laughs> All right, I, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out and let you know. All right, so I, I'll upload the video to the to the to the YouTube so you can practice about it.